Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 223. O living host, my one and only strength, fountain of love and mercy, embrace the whole world, fortify faint souls. O blessed be the instant and the moment when Jesus left us his most merciful heart. To suffer without complaining, to bring comfort to others, and to drown my own sufferings in the most sacred heart of Jesus, I will spend all my free moments at the feet of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. At the feet of Jesus I will seek light, comfort, and strength. I will show my gratitude unceasingly to God for his great mercy towards me, never forgetting the favors he has bestowed on me, especially the grace of a vocation. I will hide myself among the sisters like a little violet among lilies. I want to blossom for my Lord and Maker, to forget about myself, to empty myself totally for the sake of immortal souls. This is my delight. A few of my thoughts. As regard holy confession, I shall choose what costs and humiliates me most. Sometimes a trifle costs more than something greater. I will call to mind the passion of Jesus at each confession, to arouse my heart to contrition. In so far as possible, with the grace of God, I will always practice perfect contrition. I will devote more time to this contrition. Before I approach the confessional, I shall first enter the open and most merciful heart of the Savior. When I leave the confessional, I shall rouse in my soul great gratitude to the Holy Trinity for this wonderful and inconceivable miracle of mercy that is wrought in my soul. And the more miserable my soul is, the more I feel the ocean of God's mercy engulfing me and giving me strength and great power. The rules that I most often fail to obey. Sometimes I break silence. Disobedience to the signal of the bell. Sometimes I meddle in other people's affairs. I will do my very best to improve. I will avoid sisters who grumble, and if they cannot be avoided, I will at least keep silent before them, thus letting them know how sorry I am to hear such things. I must take no heed of the opinion of others, but obey the evidence of my own conscience and take God to be the witness of all my actions. I must do everything and act in all matters now as I would like to do and act at the hour of my death. For this reason, in every action, I must be mindful of God. Avoid presumed permissions. I must report even small things to my superiors and do so in as much detail as is possible. I must be faithful in my spiritual exercises. I must not easily ask to be dispensed from them. I must keep silence outside the time of recreation and avoid jokes and witty words that make others laugh and break silence. I must have great appreciation for even the most minute rules. I must not let myself become absorbed in the whirl of work, but take a break to look up to heaven. Speak little with people, but a good deal with God. Avoid familiarity. I must pay little attention as to who is for me and who is against me. I must not tell others about those things I have had to put up with. I must avoid speaking out loud to others during work. I must maintain peace and equanimity during times of suffering. In difficult moments, I must take refuge in the wounds of Jesus. I must seek consolation, comfort, light, and affirmation in the wounds of Jesus. In the midst of trials, I will try to see the loving hand of God. Nothing is as constant as suffering. It is always faithfully, it always faithfully keeps the soul company. 
O Jesus, I will let no one surpass me in loving you. During her retreat, St. Faustina has many reflections on the Eucharist. She makes the connection between the Eucharist and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It's interesting that in many of the Eucharistic miracles, the discovery has been that the Eucharist, the consecrated flesh, is made up of heart muscle of a man who suffered greatly, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Then, St. Faustina shares some thoughts, which are resolutions that she makes during the retreat. She wants to make choices that will help her to grow in humility. To prepare for confession and to be contrite of heart, she wants to call to mind Jesus' passion. She also resolves to overcome some of her faults regarding the rule and her relations with others. She mentions avoiding presumed permissions. In situations in which it is not possible to ask permission of the superior to do something, the religious, in certain instances, may presume that the superior would give permission in this case so the religious can go forth and do it. But she wants to avoid making these assumptions and only do things that she has the actual permission of the superior to do. And finally, St. Faustina resolves to draw good even out of the inevitable sufferings that she will have to endure. Thank you.